Welcome to the Chemisode on Covalent Molecules. It covers drawing how to draw covalent molecules. Remember you have the Chemisode app for the iPhone and iPad, so if you haven't checked out that already, please have a look at that. Um, it's got about 300 flashcards on how to um, do chemistry for this Unit 1 that we're covering so far. Let's go have a look at covalent molecules and what they are. Remember, you can get the notes that I'm going through here from the Edmodo website. So join our Edmodo group and you can get the notes and download those and follow along. Now, this is a materials science. Unit 1, AOS or Area of Study 2, is all about materials. And we all look at the structure of materials and the properties of materials. And we really want to think about how these two things link together, the structure and the properties. We've done metallic, we've done ionic, and now we're doing covalent molecules. So let's go have a look at how covalent molecules come together and how covalent molecules are formed. Fundamentals of covalent molecules are this. They are formed from two or more, so not just two, two or more non-metallic elements. It's when they combine together and they form bonds. We're going to look at drawing the valence structure of these things. We're going to look at naming the molecule and their shapes. This is an area that gets a bit difficult, so we're going to look at that um, in the next video. And we're going to look at polarity, which is um, an interesting feature of covalent molecules, and the polarity really explains their um, properties a bit. So we're going to look at these three things, three versions of covalent molecules. This is part one on drawing the valence structure. So let's go have a look at how we draw the valence structure of a covalent molecule. The first example is chlorine gas, where we have two chlorine molecules coming together to form a, um, two chlorine atoms coming together to form a chlorine molecule. Now, first thing we need to do is draw our Lewis dot structures, just like we did in ionic bonding, when we looked at how electron transfer diagrams work. So we draw our Lewis dot structure for our chlorine um, atom and we realize that it needs one electron to become stable. Okay, Chlorine gas is actually a diatomic gas. It means it has two chlorines bonded together. How chlorine comes together and forms a, um, a compound is it needs to have eight electrons in the outside shell. It does this by sharing this unpaired electron here. What happens is it spins around and you can see here, we have the sharing of these electrons. So therefore, they're both gaining one electron in a sense. You can see here, chlorine is stable with eight electrons in its outside shell. You can see here that this chlorine is also stable with eight electrons in its outside shell. And that these two electrons in the middle, they are shared. These shared electrons are known as a covalent bond. What we actually do, another way of drawing covalent bonds or covalent molecules is a thing called the valence structure. The valence structure looks like this, where we have lines representing pairs of electrons. Okay, These lines all represent a pair of electrons. Electrons are always happy when they're in pairs. Atoms are stable when they have eight. Electrons need to be paired up. We can see two types of electron pairs. One is the bonding pair, which is holding the molecule together, holding these two atoms together. The shared pair of electrons is known as a bonding pair. The other type are lone pairs of electrons. They are these guys here, which are not involved in bonding. They're the ones that the atom had already. So the valence structure, where we have a line that represents two electrons, and the lone pairs of electrons are the ones that are not bonding. The bonding pairs are the ones that are shared between. Okay, So this is two ways you can draw these um, covalent molecules. Really, we will draw it normally as a valence structure. That's the generic form that we will use, the valence structure. However, you need to understand that each line in this valence structure represents the two electrons. Here's another example. Another example is water. So water, the first thing we're going to do is draw the Lewis dot structure for the atoms that make up water, your oxygen and your hydrogen. 
Now, to work out where the bonds will form, what we need to do is look for these lone, sorry, not lone pairs, these unpaired electrons. So the first thing we need to look at is where the unpaired electrons are. This is where your bonds will form. So in oxygen, you've got two unpaired electrons. Electron here and electron here. In hydrogen, you have each electron that hydrogen has is unpaired because it's just a single electron. So what we're going to do is this is where your bonds will form. This hydrogen will share with this electron from the oxygen. This electron from this hydrogen will share with this. So to draw how our sharing looks, we'll draw it like this, where we have the oxygen in the middle and our hydrogen sharing one here and our hydrogen here where we have the shared electrons are circled. You can see the bonds are circled here. The valence structure for the water molecule, obviously all we do is turn these pairs of electrons into lines and there it is there where you have the oxygen with one bond to a hydrogen on this side and one bond to a hydrogen on this side and two lone pairs of electrons. Just going through the process, we first of all drew the Lewis dot structure. We then looked for unpaired electrons and we thought about how we could share to make that stable. Before I go on, I'm going to point out an interesting thing about hydrogen. We've always said that things need to have eight electrons to become stable. Hydrogen is a little bit different. It only requires two electrons. The reason hydrogen only requires two electrons is because it only has one shell, which has a maximum of two electrons in it. So really, this hydrogen here is stable with two electrons. This hydrogen here is stable with two electrons as well. So that's the only element that we deal with that only needs the two electrons. Everything else will need eight. So that is an example of water where we've drawn the Lewis dot structure, looked for the unpaired electrons, shared them, and drawn our valence structure down here as water. Next example is oxygen gas. Oxygen gas, we have oxygen. We look for unpaired electrons because this is where the bonds will form. Here are our unpaired electrons. Okay, This one has two unpaired electrons. This has two unpaired electrons. You can imagine that these guys will be shared and these guys here will be shared as well. So drawing how it's going to look when it gets shared, we'll go over here and we can see we're sharing two pairs of electrons between the two oxygens. Okay, these pairs of electrons are involved in bonding. So what this looks like as a valence structure, where we change and draw our um, each pair of electrons as a line, is this, where we have oxygen with two bonds between it, because we have two pairs of electrons being shared between the two atoms. This double bond is known as a covalent double bond. So these two bonds between it, when your two atoms are sharing two pairs of electrons, we have a double bond where four electrons are shared. So that's oxygen gas. Okay, moving on, um, hopefully that makes sense to you where we're sharing these electrons. Remember, I did it exactly the same way as I did the last one. I first of all looked at the Lewis dot structure, I circled my unpaired electrons to find where my bonds will form, and I worked out a way of sharing so we have eight electrons in total around this oxygen and eight electrons in total around this oxygen as well. And that made us have a double bond. The next one's a little bit harder, so we'll look at the next one, which is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, you have carbon and oxygen. If we first of all just write down carbon and oxygen like this, we'll look for our unpaired electrons. We can see that oxygen has two and carbon actually has four unpaired electrons. These two can easily be matched up with these two here. But how are we going to get pairs for these? What we need to do is draw another oxygen in. 
With this extra oxygen, we can see we have two more unpaired electrons which can match these two here. So what we can do is then think about a way, imagine taking this oxygen, putting it on this side of the carbon, this oxygen on this side of the carbon, we get our electron dot structure of our covalent molecule here, where we have each carbon has four shared electrons with an oxygen on one side and four shared electrons with another oxygen on the other side. So this carbon dioxide, if we were to draw its valence structure, where we change each pair of electrons into a line, will look like this, where we have a carbon in the centre, center, double bonded to an oxygen on one side and double bonded to an oxygen on the other side. This is carbon dioxide. We have lone pairs of electrons sticking out the side here and lone pairs of electrons sticking out the side here. So hopefully this is kind of giving you a bit of an idea about how we can form covalent bonds and how we can write them. What I've got is your turn for these covalent molecules. What I want you to do is pause this podcast or pause this video that you're watching and have a go at trying to draw these molecules and draw the valence structure for these molecules. Okay? You need to show your bonding pairs and you need to show your non-bonding pairs as well. Remember, the first step is to write the Lewis dot structure for each atom. You look for your unpaired electrons on each atom and then you look at how they can come together to share electrons. So pause this now, try and draw the valence structure for this molecule, this molecule, this molecule, and this molecule. So pause it now and let's do that. Okay, so now you've come back and now it's time to look and see how you went with drawing these structures. The first one, NH3, well, actually, all of them look like this. We have NH3 with three bonds to hydrogen and one lone pair. This is methane, CH4, where we have all the bonds in carbon taken up with one hydrogen. Hydrogen, remember, they only share one electron each, so they form a bond like this. And then tetra, um, carbon tetrachloride with CCl4 looks like this where we have chlorines around a central carbon and three lone pairs of electrons on each of these. Hopefully we went well there. If you didn't, um, try and work out where you messed up and if you still can't work that out, either send me an email or take it to your classroom teacher and have a look at it. Here's a summary of the key points of what I've covered so far in terms of drawing covalent molecules. Covalent molecules are formed from non-metallic elements. So that means all the elements on the right-hand side with more than four electrons in their outside shell. Bonds form from unpaired electrons. So the key thing is to draw the Lewis dot structure first and you can see where the bonds are going to form on these unpaired electrons. Elements become stable by sharing electrons. So you want to share those unpaired electrons and form those bonds. Non-bonding pairs of electrons are called lone pairs. So that's another bit of terminology for you. And that's the end for this part of covalent molecules. If you have a question, please let me know. If not, stay tuned for part two.